So we'll move on. Ooh, we'll move on to our next application to the multi-phase models. Discuss a little bit about the Lagrangian methods. And there's two main uh, Lagrangian methods within STAR. You've got the Lagrangian models, LMP, and you've got DEM, discrete element method. <clears throat> the Lagrangian multi-phase, uh, you're essentially injecting a number of particles into your simulation flow. Uh, usually you're doing this with sprays, droplets, so you have thousands, millions of little particles you're injecting, and it'll group them into what they call parcels um, and track that parcel throughout the flow. This has many uses. It can be done for steady state. It can be done for transient analysis. The particles can react, be part of a reacting flow if you're doing combustion, uh, either a liquid fuel or a solid fuel. But with this, the um, <coughs> LMP models will calculate the particle path. Um, and that path will be saved and you can go back and plot what the particle path was for a, a, a transient uh, or a steady state analysis and you know look at different components about you know velocities or temperatures or uh, mass fractions of that uh, specific particle. The DEM method is a little bit more of a robust version of LMP. Um, with LMP, when you define the phase, you're just kind of setting up, you know, maybe that phase interaction with different surfaces. With DEM particles, the big thing is you not only have the phase interaction with different surfaces, you also have got body-to-body -body interaction. Um, every particle is essentially almost an independent particle that you're tracking. It can bounce against the walls, it can bounce against itself. You've got other models available in STAR where you can you can clump these particles together if you're starting off with a baseball solution, build up a custom particle shape. There's other particle shapes available, such as cylinders and tubes in STAR, or you can even do a polygon particle. But they can clump together, they can tear, break, you can add adhesion to it, so these particles kind of join together as they're mixing around in a certain mixer. Um, we have quick little demonstration here of dim particles uh, in a dryer. And they're, you can see kind of the moisture content as these things are getting dried off and water is evaporating off of them. So <clears throat> kind of at the beginning when we started, you know, me and Bjorn were first talking about putting together this webinar and kind of focusing on mixing. We had a few other clients uh, that we were talking to at the time that had some interest in uh, mixing analysis. Uh, there was the idea of ribbon mixers came up and I haven't really dealt too much with ribbon mixers. So what I did was start searching online YouTube videos and found a couple examples of ribbon mixer, mixers. And I found this one video kind of shown down here. Um, we haven't ever worked with this company. I just found this video on YouTube. But when I looked at this uh, video of demonstrating their machine, that just looked exactly like a DEM analysis to me. Uh, they've got a bunch of discrete foam balls that are kind of turning around within their vat. So I basically decided to try to put together an example myself shown here where we've got say blue, red, balls, these are rubber balls, that are just turning around and being mixed in a ribbon mixer. This is actually using an overset mesh uh, to model the motion of the blades. It could have been done with uh, rigid body motion, but we thought this would be a good application just to demonstrate the use of a uh, overset mesh. One advantage of an overset mesh too is if you wanted to make a modification, let's say two uh, ribbons that are standing next to each other in a wider vat that might be intermixing with the space, that would require the overset mesh. So we're going to open up this model real quick and kind of go through uh, just how is that set up, um, how's the over mesh defined, and uh, poke around a little bit of how we set up the uh, DEM model itself. So if we jump in, again we've got our geometry right here. Um, we can look at the CAD model. The CAD model 
for this was fully created uh, within the StarCAD system. You can see you've got basin overset uh, mesh elements up here. We've defined that into two separate regions, the main basin, which just has one surface. It's just the walls of this uh, kind of half circle trough type shape. And then we've got our overset region here. If you look at the overset region, it looks like a very thick version of our uh, uh, ribbon mixer itself. But you've got the outer walls of the ro overset re region, and then you've got the actual physical ribbon walls themselves. If I move over to the section mesh here, we can see where we have the overlap between the overset region and the background basin uh, mesh. And some things to kind of keep in mind if you are employing an overset mesh is one, you like to kind of make sure that the mesh size between your overset region with respect to your background region is about the same uh, size overall. And you'd also want to make sure that you've got at least four to five cells uh, that are overlapping between the overset and the background mesh region. Um, if you don't have that, you may run into issues and in cutting out the hole in the background mesh that would lead to uh, simulation stability or just not running of the simulation properly. If we move over to the continua, real quick. Uh, we've got a dim particle continua up right up here. Um, our Lagrangian multiphases are defined here and these are already going to be already predefined uh, for this demonstration. We've got dim one and dim two and both of these are essentially just if I look at the properties rubber balls everything with the default uh, options set interesting aspects when we look at the multi-phase interactions. If we look at the multi-phase interactions, we see we got to create interactions for DIM1 to TIM2, the two phases, each phase with respect to the walls, and each phase with respect to itself. Uh, and all these phases, they can be customized. Um, like I said, you could add uh, additional models such as artificial viscosity or cohesion, so these could stick together. Uh, basically, uh, model something that might be a little bit more of a viscous granular flow. So we've got that set up, and if we go to our view scene, our right here, we can see this is what we were showing in the video. Um, we've got two injectors set up for DIM1 and DIM2, and both of these are using uh, field variables to uh, calculate how the uh, flow is dumped in. Because we've got this set up right now um, so that in the first one second we dump in phase one, and then in the first second second we dump in phase two through these field functions. And again, as you see here, it's using the same little Boolean statements that we were showing below before. Now, one thing, when you get all this model set up, it's always good to do with a uh, uh, overset mesh is to confirm that you actually have your motion set up correctly. And an easy way to do that Here's a create a new continuum that's called motion test. If we look at the models in this motion test, we don't have anything. Uh, all we're defining it's three dimensional, it's implicit unsteady. There's nothing with respect to flow or dim particles in it. We can switch both of these guys over to that new physics continuum for the motion test. And the overset, as I mentioned before, you're applying your motion to this as a rigid body motion, same way that was shown before. Um, we have a motion set up here. We want to create a test rotation. So we don't wait for the rotation to start. We're just going to hit run and go back to the scene. And hopefully what we should see is this uh, paddle starting to click along as the motion has been correctly applied to it. All right. Then go have lunch. 
Thanks, everybody. We'll be following up with the recording of this presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good Bye. afternoon. Bye.